students to this class on the short story the key of the store by ponkunam worki ponkunam worki is a malayalam writer an activist turned writer who wrote uh, more than 120 short stories and uh, 16 plays he wrote against the evils of the society of his time he wrote about uh, the clergy of his time he wrote about the real life people in this short story the key of the store also he finds uh, we find you know two characters workis and koshi who are friends this is a story of friendship of betrayal of honesty versus dishonesty so we find these two characters and how their friendship uh, turns or how betrayal plays in between their friendship and the title the key of the store you know it has got a particular significance you know this short story is about these two farmers who turned who mortgaged their farms to start a store and both these uh, friends they had equal rights over the store but the key of the store this bunch of keys that was kept by workers alone and it was as if the shop was owned by workers alone so that is this, that is how this title come that is from it's from this the title comes from the key of the store and finally what happened to this bunch of keys and what koshi did after the death of workers with this key of the store so we will read the story as we read the story we get the we get to know the characters koshi and workers how they are very much uh, different from each other their attitude and perspectives in life workers and koshi started a business partnership they had wanted to do it for a long time for they both found it difficult to meet the rising cost of living with the income from their farms only if you throw out money you can make it workers said to koshi so right from the beginning we get to know that workers is uh, ready to take risks Koshi mortgaged his farm and took collected seven hundred and fifty rupees. Workers too took the same amount. They opened a grocery store. Fortunately, they got a few ration cards registered in their shop. Thus, it grew into a first-class shop of its kind. Koshi was not the type suited to business. He was prone to believe the tactics, tales of hardship that people told him. He believed in them implicitly. He was compassionate. He was ready to give uh, things on debt, but Workers was not. that was where his uh, failing lay workis was a different kind of man he was not prepared to believe in anyone he would start distrusting them and later trust them if this was warranty nobody could cheat him so that was another point but though he cheated many he was not the man to distribute the provisions in the shop among all and sundry he was not prepared to sell on credit he was particular about not lending even to the tune of 1 paisa debt in danger he said please do not ask for credit business slogans of this kind were scrawled over the rafters and shutters of the store refuse credit and you incur displeasure for once but give credit and you become an enemy forever so these were the these were of uh, these at uh, the server is followed these it was This was the gist of his business ethics. It was workers who did business at the store. Koshi went on errands to bring ration provisions and other articles. He always wrote out all the details of expenses incurred during each such trips and promptly handed them over to workers. So, you know, this was uh, Koshi's um, attitude and life. He uh, wrote down everything that he did, uh, the amount that he spent. But Bogi said, you know, uh, why? just say that you have spent this much that is enough why all these details but koshi was keen that his friend did not entertain any suspicion even about a paisa the two had equal rights over the shop but people always called it burgess shop and koshi's wife was very much um, irritated about this because she knew that you know the uh, the uh, shop belonged to both of them but people started um, calling the shop as burgess shop Don't you start saying all sort of things about this. People call it because it is briefer. Koshi tried to pacify his wife, but it is briefer still to call Koshi's shop. She countered. Whenever his wife advanced such arguments, the gentle Koshi would turn a deaf ear. How much more precious is a friend compared to suspicion? This was his attitude. Though his wife uh, started having doubts about uh, Wagi's behavior, 
Koshi uh, disregarded all those. He valued his uh, friend and friendship. Koshi trusted his friend completely. Vargas labored for the shop far more than he did. He wrote out the accounts correctly and meticulously. Besides, thought Koshi, he at least smoked beedies while Vargas did not even do that. Vargas did not joke with anybody, nor did he even smile uh, much. Business dignity, accounts, here were his serious preoccupations. He was doubly cleverer than Koshi in dealing with customers. Once while Vergis and Koshi were sitting in the shop, the question of the disposal of some use, uh, useless flour in the ration consignment came up. How can one supply this to people? Let us uh, use it as cattle field, uh, Koshi suggested. First feed men, then beast, Vergis replied ponderously. Would the government have issued this if it were not good for men? What will we do when the rationing officer comes and inspects the accounts on this? Vergis continued. The people gathered there endorsed what Vergis said and Koshi lapsed into silence. Once a customer came for a quarter of a pound of onions. Vergis was busy mixing a good variety of rice for the bad quality consignment. If the good rice were kept separately, every customer would want only that, hence the mixing. So these were the business uh, tactics that uh, Vergis followed. So right from the beginning, uh, we come to know that uh, Vergis is uh, dishonest, very clever, and wanted to make money out of everything. And onion, uh, it, like so, it was Koshi who went to the balance to weigh out the onions. Vergis looked up at the balance, and onion had to be stuck to the chain holding one of the pans of the balance. That much additional weight was needed to make both pans even. But it was not clear and Vergis was worried. And what was worse, Koshi dropped the onions to be weighed right into the lighter pan. It meant the customer would get at least four onions more than was his legitimate due. Hold, hold, stick an onion in the, uh, onto the top of that chain, Vergis shouted. He was perspiring profusely. He stood up and took off his shirt. Clean felt the key of the shop on the floor. So he always carried this key with him. It dropped out from his shirt pocket. Once Vergis went to uh, take delivery of the ration consignment, many tricks were usually played where uh, ration consignments were delivered. So uh, he used to sell it to the private parties. And uh, and even though in, in uh, during those days, you know, the key was not given to Koshi. You know, Koshi used to sell uh, things uh, outside the shop, you know, in front of the clothes to show. Koshi was a straightforward man and a misfit in such places. So that day, Koshi went to attend the business in the store, but he found it closed for the key was with Vargis. Not that there was any meaning in all that for Koshi. Vargis closed the shop when he went to collect the rations. And probably he did not want to bother Koshi. So that is the attitude of Koshi. Koshi thought so that, you know, Vargis didn't want to uh, bother Koshi. But on the other hand, uh, Vargis didn't want to uh, give the key of the store Vergis. Vergis, uh, like yes, Koshi was straightforward and she, he was not bothered about uh, these things. Vergis got nine sacks of parboiled rice that time as part of the ration consignment. He sold six sacks of it to private profiters on the spot. He did not have to soil his hands or sweat over measuring out the rice at the shop to his usual clients. The land is going to the docks since the Congress began to rule. So, to the people, this is what he says and grumbled uh, for the lack of uh, ration, that the full ration of rice was not given. That was what uh, he uh, told the customers. The ration shop prospered. Koshi desired to organize some savings from the profits. He told workers that he would like to take, an, uh, take out an insurance policy for a thousand rupees. Let the shop run for another two years, scramble the money we have and we are lost. So that is what she, uh, this Vargas uh, said when Koshi wanted to take an uh, insurance policy. But later on, he found out, he, uh, found out that uh, Vargas had already took uh, insurance policies for him and for his wife as well. We must spend money to make more, Vergis admonished Koshi. Wasn't that true? Koshi felt he should agree with Vergis. They brought, uh, they Profited from the shop because Vergis managed it carefully. Koshi agreed that profits might better be divided two years later. 
One day, Koshi's wife Maria Kudi sent her servant to the shop for some rice and kerosene oil. The man took a long time to bring him. She was angry and asked him why he delayed so much. I was served only now, he said. So that was another incident that uh, made uh, Maria Kudi, Koshi's wife, so angry. The servant was uh, served very uh, lately. And on another occasion, uh, the servant uh, took, uh, the servant uh, was uh, made to wait for so long that he went away without collecting the uh, provision. Another day also the servant was kept uh, waiting uh, at the shop and uh, this um, Koshi's wife was so angry and said if the shop belonged to you, if you are a big merchant of that shop, then why the servant is made to wait uh, that long? And this time uh, the Koshi, uh, this uh, servant was delayed so long and that he went, uh, went, went back without uh, getting uh, those provisions. There must be some other reason, Koshi said. We should not solely rely on what the servant says. The shop belong to us. The good belong to us. When there are other customers, should we not be the ones to wait? Koshi asked his wife. No, we are not going to wait like that. It is not the first time that he has done this. He acts as if he is doing us a favor. Koshi then went to the shop. It was not that I didn't see him uh, wait for the provisions. Vogis, on the other hand, said he knew how to play, how to talk. At last I looked for him. He was already gone. If he was in such a hurry, he could, have, he could as well have measured out the things and taken them home. I would not have stopped him, Vergis said. Koshi was satisfied. Vergis then sent the things to Koshi's house uh, with another man. And ah, uh, the martyr that Vergis appeared to be. He had to hear his wife's scoldings, his friend's uh, uh, criticism and his friend's uh, wife's harsh words. So he appeared as if he is a martyr. Either you must also sit in the shop or someone else on your behalf. Koshi's wife always said that. Koshi's wife repeatedly pressed him. But Koshi went to the shop only when it suited him. It was workers who now who went every time to bring ration consignments. Koshi's wife complained bitterly that workers kept the shop closed and took the key with him every time he went on his trips. But what could she do except complain? Koshi went to the shop every day for a few days because of her best string. While at the shop, he did not like to sit idle when his partner worked. But when he started doing something, Vergis would interfere. Vergis had his own ideas of how things should be done. Koshi was not schooled in those ways. One day, a ration cardholder went to Koshi for his quota of sugar. He was entitled to two pounds of his rare commodity. Koshi took out a piece of paper to weigh the sugar. Vergis developed a sudden hatred for the customer who was trying to cheat his partner. Actually, it was Vergis who was cheating all these uh, people all the, all the while. So you cannot swallow anything without sugar, huh? Vergis maliciously asked the customer. Of course, these fellows were eating sugar from the days of their grandfathers. He loudly mused, get away, my dear fellow, and mind some other business. Don't play tricks on me. I know you need no sugar now. If tomorrow you need some sugar to take some medicine or powder, just come here. You will get it free. He told the customer and bundled him off very cleverly. Koshi, on the other hand, would have thrown away two pounds of valuable sugar. Vergi's cleverness lay in his ability to deal with the people, depending on who and what they were. Whatever other qualities Koshi had, he did not know this art of uh, you know, uh, dealing with people, cheating them. Water, but it was not uh, considered as cheating by Koshi then. He didn't perceive his fr friend as a cheat. One day a man came from the village officer's house to buy his ration. Koshi measured out the unit and held out his hand for the price. No, no, it is for the officer. Vergis corrected him. He knew that it was not safe to take that money. As the saying goes, even if it is only a water snake that bites you, you will have to uh, forgo your supper. In short, Koshi was no good at the shop. He did not know how to maintain accounts either. He wondered why he should continue sitting there in such a situation. Was he sitting there to check on his friend? What a shame. No, the shop business was not in his line, he concluded. There was a knife in that shop for cutting things, slicing arachnids and so on. It was a blunt implement. Burgess had tied it to the leg of the table with a string. Doesn't it mean that he that we distrust everyone who comes here? Koshi asked him, once lifting the tethered knife. Yes, Vagis replied. This is not a church where we can trust everybody who comes. So this is uh, the behavior of Kosh Vagis. He never trusted anyone. If everyone were to be trusted, why protect coconut trees with thorn bells? 
In big restaurants, they keep matchsticks and empty cigarette tins and hand out one at a time to customers. Why not keep full boxes of matches? Why have a lock for this shop? Why have a key? As he gave his discourse on not believing people, Kling fell the key of the shop on the floor from the loose folds of his dhoti. He always carried it with him, even to the bathing ghat and lavatory. It happened once that he forgot to take it from the bathing ghat. He realized, realized it only when he came to the store, but that was an isolated happening. He Every time he used to carry the key of the store with him. It was a feast day at the local church. The families of Vergis and Koshi had already arrived. The priest was preaching his sermon with best quotations from the Bible. But the eyes of Koshi's wife were on the new necklace, the new rings and the other ornaments which Vergi's wife was wearing. Like a cow on a green pasture, the mind of the young woman was chewing the curd of her desire to be similarly decked out. But it could not be. The chains and the rings uh, which Vergi's wife was wearing came off her husband's necklace of the store. So she immediately um, uh, understood the point. How expensive were the dresses worn by Vergi's children? Marekuri could not entertain, contain herself. Her mind was filled with anger and hatred. Like a tigress, she rushed out of the church and went home even before the service had concluded. Vergi's and Koshi's wife met again at a marriage unexpectedly. A woman can suffer anything to get her lover or salvation, but there is one thing that is insufferable, and that is the beauty of another woman. Vergi's wife was generously bestowed with all good features of person, but she lacked Maria's, Maria Kuti's beauty and youth. So she was trying to score over her adversary, at least in dress and ornaments. Her slippers were covered with snake skin. It was against this background that they chanced to meet at a marriage party. Here was a woman nearing 40 who was fat and was not accustomed to walking in slippers. To see such a woman waddling in slippers was as, as uncomfortable as to be bitten by ants from the folds of a well-starched shirt. The beauty of a woman is something to be enjoyed, but her misconceived parading of it was really insufferable. No wonder that a young woman like Maria Kuti laughed at the ludicrous behavior of Vergi's wife. Her eyes hovered like a pair of bees about the sari, the necklace, and the brooches on her rival's person. Vergi's wife longed that some woman would ask her the price of her sari or the cost of her ornaments. How could she announce these unasked? She would get no sleep that night if someone did not praise for her for them. Maria Kuti gritted her teeth at the ridiculous way that Vergi's wife played the young woman. At last, Vergi's wife got her chance. A young woman asked her about the price of her slippers. Maria Kuti was standing nearby and talking to another young woman. She was indirectly aiming her bidding satire at Vergi's wife. But although the wives of the partners had been in that house for so long and had been so much of each so much and seen so much of each other, they had not exchanged one word. When Vargi's wife was waxing eloquent on the rare nature of her slippers, Maria Kuti said ostensibly to her friend, If the husband has farming, then the wife will have a grain debt. Or if only I had an outrang outrang, I could have clothed it with a shirt. Vergi's wife had been listening to Maria Kuti's singing words for some time, stinging words, and her patience was wearing thin. Look, why do you want to look at look for an orang orang elsewhere? You have one right in your own house. Listen, there is no cure for jealousy. Men buy things for their wives. As for you, you go home and Vergi's wife said contemptuously. There ensued a war of words. At last, some sensible women brought peace on the scene. On the 30th July, Vergis paid Koshi a sum of 1,000 rupees. I think we can withdraw 1,000 each. The ration business has not been good for the last few months. However, there is no harm in our withdrawing 2,000. Now, I want to tell you something else, Koshi, said Vergis. Our wives, wives talk too much. What a shame if other people hear them. Aren't we the ones to stop it? I have never cheated you, nor ever will. But look at what your wife says about me. All of us are wives, but this should have been stopped long ago. Vagi spoke, pressing his swollen right cheek with his palm to stop an insufferable pain. What wrote she talks about me? I didn't bargain for that. His voice broke down. A disciplined friend like Vergis had much to say, thought 
Koshi. Koshi bowed his head before his noble friend. He was ashamed of his wife for having uh, brought accusations against Vagis. He remembered the saying that a woman's tongue is deadlier than a sword. So even now he believed Vagis. They withdrew two thousand rupees, and now we get to know something is uh, something is troubling Vagis. You know he has some sort of pain. Uh, he is suffering from sort of disease. I have never entertained any evil thought against you. Don't bother about what women may have uh, said. Koshi consoled Vagis. Koshi went home and mused. After all, I invested only 70, 750 rupees. I must have taken out goods worth a thousand rupees. And now I have received a thousand in cash. Now one could not say cruel things about Vagis, said Koshi, defending his partner in his mind. That day, Koshi unusually scolded his wife and warned her against speaking ill of Vagis. You are sorry only about what I say, asked Koshi's wife. Many people say the same things. If you do not want to understand the situation, I do not want to tell you again about it. You can cover the mouth of a thousand pots, but you cannot shut people's mouth. Listen, I am not speaking about pots now. I only ask you to shut up. Koshi was angry. True, people were saying things about Vagis, that Koshi was a simple man and Vagis was cheating him, that partnerships uh, were no good and that each man should look after his own affairs and so on. Vagis understood the psychology of people who said such things. It was born of their helplessness. They just could not hoodwink him. Besides, he knew so-called public opinion is a whole of thing. So, uh, Koshi was such a, a straightforward person who didn't want to believe what people said, what even if a wife said about Koshi. The death anniversary of Vergi's father approached. Now that he had a ration shop, he felt that he should give something in charity and feed a few starving stomachs. It was a good opportunity and he did not let it go. He invited a number of local people and gave them a grand feast. He had also a vow to fulfill, a vow he had taken when he fell ill. It was the building of a chapel for the parish church. Three bishops and forty priests attended uh, its consecration. The shop was flourishing, but then it became necessary that Burgess School should undergo treatment for the insufferable pain in his cheek. He had been suffering from toothache for past seven or eight months, and some swelling had appeared. When the doctor announced that it was cancer, he was shocked. He was undergoing some indigenous uh, treatment to escape surgery. He became weak due to dietary restrictions and the disease had worsened. Now there was no other way. Try radiation, the doctor said. Go to Trivandrum. I shall give you a letter. So Vagis decided to go to Trivandrum and Koshi got ready to go with them. It is a great that you have partnership in business. Must you have partnership in illness also? Koshi's wife asked her husband for uh, accompanying him to Trivandrum. At Trivandrum, the doctor said, let him stay here for a while. I have no uh, high hopes. When Vergis uh, heard the doctor's views, he was as good as dead. People would raise hell if their rations were not distributed at the store. So Koshi decided to get back. Vergis had to agree to this plan rather reluctantly. In the meanwhile, Koshi had made arrangements for the sick man's care. As Koshi bade a uh, farewell, his friends held him by the hand and wept. It was a touching scene. And though Koshi did not weep, his heart bled for Vagis. He was prepared to do any service that is for his friend. Don't behave like foolish people, Koshi said, told him. There is nothing to fear. We have to face every eventuality, Koshi said Vagis in a very broken voice. I have done you many wrongs. Forgive me, for God's sake. Do not harm my children. So these were the pleading words of uh, Vagis, uh, rather last words that he should forgive and he should not harm uh, Vagis' children. But Koshi didn't understand what she, he was saying. But Vagis, what wrongs have you done to me? Done me? Koshi added, asked in astonishment. Koshi could not conceive of his, um, his friend doing him any harm, any uh, wrong. Koshi left for home. It was only when he saw the store that he thought of the key. It was the Vagis. He had forgotten about it at the moment of parting. How, how sad was that moment? And what a trifling thing, the K. Vergis too must have forgotten. That is what uh, Koshi uh, thought. It was possible to have the store opened by a blacksmith. But wait, he said to himself. He strained his uh, resources, brought the ration consignments and distributed uh, them from the veranda of the store. When people asked him what was wrong with opening the shop, he was silent. There was nothing wrong about it, but to force open the door, well, Koshi was not happy about it. 
A few days later, Koshi had a telegram from the doctor. Immediately, he left for Trivandrum, where his grief-stricken wife also accompanied him. Radiation had no effect. Vergis was fast nearing the end. Vergis' wife wept. Seeing his friend Koshi too wept, Vergis was past the stage of treatment. Take him home quickly, the doctor directed. Koshi hired a taxi and took his friend home. The very next day, Vergis bid farewell to his ration shop, to his friend and to his family. The funeral was a grand affair. The priest's ration in which he set forth the many qualities of the uh, deceased took him a full hour and a half. He had such a profound respect for the good man who built the chapel. Koshi felt extremely sad for the good friend who had borne so much for him. He felt a profound respect for the widow and a great affection for his children. Nothing for him was more precious than a friend. So this was Koshi's um, attitude and Koshi's behavior and his character. The key of the store was recovered from Koshi's dead body. Koshi devoted all his time to the conduct of the store, but the account books were not with him. They were at his friend's residence, for it was Vergis who wrote the accounts and that too at night. Vergis' wife respected Koshi like a guardian. Whatever complaint she had was not against him, but his wife. It was Sunday. After service, Koshi went to Vergis' grave and stood beside it for a while. Tears rolled down his cheeks and the parched earth of the grave drank them greedily. He remembered Vergi's words, I have done you many wrongs, forgive me, for God's sake, do not harm my children. Those words rang in Koshi's ears. What could be the wrong that Vergi's had done? His words could not mean anything. He might have spoke uh, from the goodness of his heart. At last, it became necessary that Koshi should have uh, the account books and initially he didn't want to but he was he sent for the account books it was no longer possible to continue scribbling the accounts on bits of paper he particularly felt the need to have those books whenever people brought the dues uh, that they owned uh, the store there was no obvious reason why he should not send for the books it was just that he went on postponing finally he sent for them and came and they came it was a big bundle a full load of for a coolie Koshi wondered why so many books were necessary. He took them home to go through the at leisure. He spent sleepless nights over the books and over each pages his heart dragged itself bleeding. His wife sat beside him uh, wrapped in thought. It puzzled her why he should get angry if she opened a book. But it consoled her that at last he was getting at secrets. I have done you many wrongs. Forgive me, for God's sake. Do not harm my children. These words rang in his ears once again, and now he knew the meaning. Some businessmen kept two sets of accounts, one that is correct and the other to cheat the income tax people. But Burgess kept three, one which was correct, the second to cheat the government, and the third to cheat his partner. Koshi's heart reeled. He had a hallucination as he wondered if he were alive. He felt stilled into the inanimate thing in a swirling mass of darkness. Vergis had made a chit savings of 4,000 rupees from the store's resources. He had shown his wife as having drawn an amount of 6,000 rupees. Obviously, the amount was passed on to her for safekeeping. Vergis' total investment was 500 rupees. And he had shown Koshi as having brought provisions for 3,000 rupees. Like the heart of the infinite permanent, the moon rose. Koshi lay sleepless, beating the bed with his hands. Look, why don't you sleep? His wife asked, uh, why don't you sleep? Sleep? Yes, what's, what's that? What's wrong? But Koshi was so preoccupied with the accounts, what he has uh, found out. I'm thinking of things. What's there to think about? Is it that you don't have the money to marry off your daughter or that the creditors are at your throat? Koshi was put out by his uh, wife's remarks. He lay silent for a while and then told them, told her, Maria Kuti, whatever you said was true. And what did I say about Vergis? Is it so? Yes. That's all I wanted to hear. I grew on my mother's milk till I was seven. Do you believe now? Yes. But couldn't you have believed earlier? Earlier? Yes, that's what I said. He was silent once again and then continued. No, I couldn't have done that. First, one must be convinced. But he was your friend and he did not believe anybody. Yes, but that was what he had learned. He would now start believing. Now that is his. Now that he is dead, the young woman laughed. It hurt Koshi to hear her laugh. 
It was very late then when Koshi woke up the next day. The postman brought him a cover. It was an insurance policy for two two thousand rupees taken by Vergis in the name of his youngest child. Koshi sent for Vergis' wife. She did not like going to his house, but the widow could not possibly disobey disobey her guardian. The words once again rang in Koshi's ears. I have done you many wrongs. Forgive me, for God's sake, do not harm my children. The grief-stricken widow stood bare head bent before Koshi and his wife. Koshi held out a key and told her, "Here is the key of the store. It is yours from today." So he was uh, so much uh, troubled with the betrayal of his uh, friend, and she he just threw away the key of the store and said. Here lies this uh, key of the store. It is yours from today. I do not need it any more. Don't ask me why. It is up to you to run the store or not. If you want, you can run the store. Otherwise, don't. I have severed all my connections with it. The woman stood hesitating. Where, whereupon, Koshi threw the key before her and walked out. There was a cloud in the skies, and it had lifted, and from Koshi's heart, a big burden. It is as if Koshi was relieved of some burden. So in this beautiful short story, we find two characters, Vergis and Koshi, uh, who were friends, and how one um, was not ready to believe anybody, even his friend, and cheated on him. And finally, uh, like we find divine justice, and how God um, uh, dealt with this uh, dishonest friend, and how he died of cancer after some time. uh and uh, leaving uh, the key, the store and the key and uh, everything uh, to koshi but koshi on the other hand was uh, like uh, he was uh, ready to for i don't uh, we cannot say that if it was uh, forgiveness you know he just wanted to get away from it uh he just wanted to sever uh, all the connections with the store with the friend and his friend's family you know he couldn't actually digest what his friend has done all through his uh, all through those days of a uh, partnership and how he was uh, cheated on and he knew that his friend was dis- dishonest but he was not saying that he was dishonest but he said he was very clever to run the business and now finally with the death and with the account books being opened he knew that his friend was dishonest all the time his friend was uh, cheating him all the time and withdrawing money uh, just for uh, him and his family and nothing was given to koshi uh, in particular so this is the story of this uh, two uh, friends uh, who uh, who run the uh, ration shop and uh, who betrayed uh, one uh, how one betrayed the other person and uh, this is the end how the key of the store was thrown to the uh, feet of the widow of vergis and uh, koshi just walked away thank you